Um, okay. Hi, everyone. So today we'll we have Miss Barbara Smith, and she will be explaining the importance of safety to everyone. Um, and hopefully, you enjoy this presentation. And um, it is sorry. Um, sorry. You are doing well, Ruth. You're Please doing good. Introduce yourself also. Okay. Um. Hi, my name is Ruth Osigala. I am a high school student, and I also take classes here so I can get my associate's degree. And um, this is a new experience for me. I wasn't really given much information, so I was I'm a bit nervous. So, but um, you are doing you a great me. job. You did a great job. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I also feel like the importance of safety um, should be advo advocated to everyone here because if we are, sorry, let me, if we are presented with an issue that would require us to use these facts, then we should know them for any future incidences. Yes, thank you. And everyone, um, just as Ruth mentioned, uh, today's presenter is Lieutenant Barbara Smith uh, with the Department oh, of Public Safety. So, how's everybody doing? Very good. All right, my name is Lieutenant Barbara Smith and I'm with the Department of Public Safety. And one of the things I like to ask everybody, are you guys familiar with our code blue boxes and how to get in contact with Department of Public Safety? Anybody? Any audience on Zoom? Okay. Um, so a couple of ways that you can reach us is if you are outside in the parking lots and if you have a emergency, then there are some code blue boxes that are color of blue. You can hit those look hit the uh, tower and it will connect you with our dispatcher. Um, and they will in return send an officer, but they may not uh, answer you right away because they're listening to the background and that information is also being recorded. Now, some of the things for Department of Public Safety is our patrol operations. We also have contract security guards, which is BTI security services. We have public service aides, police officers. We have deputy sheriff officers that come in during the evening and they patrol. And sometimes if you are here during the evening hours, you will see the red and blue lights. Um, in the evening, also at our extension centers, we have BTI security officers during the day. We also have uh, Laurel City PD, Hydesville PD um, officers um, that are patrolling our extension centers. Some of the things that DPS uh, safety services of some of the things that we provide is crime prevention tips. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar, but sometimes at the beginning of the semester, we participate with showing some uh, safety videos. We do presentations. We also do uh, tabling events where we give away information and gifts as well. Um, if you're not familiar with some of the services, we do do escorts. We do car jump services, active threat, assailant trailing, training. Uh, we patrol the campus on foot, bike, and vehicle patrols. We do have the DPS emergency communication services. And that's one of the things that I was talking about in the beginning is the uh, code blue boxes that connect you to our communications office. We also have a CCTV camera surveillance system where we monitor the activities uh, within the campus. You can also see um, incidents as well at the extension centers. Now here, we have emergency procedures and resources. This is information where you can reach us. Um, emergency line, if you're from any phone, you can contact us at 0111 or 0666. Um, but any event that you have a live emergency, we ask for you to dial 911. We do that because we know any event, some folks you may not remember to dial 301-546-0111. Uh, or 0666 from your phone. So to make it less complicated, we ask that you dial 911 and that dispatcher will transfer all the calls to us here at the uh, Largo campus. Um, we also work very close with the Wellness Center. 
um, and their information is here in the Code of Conduct Office, including our ECT and Labor Relations. If you haven't already done so, I would like to request that you download our safety app, which we call OwlSafe. It's really big on campus. It's how you communicate with us. If you look right here, you see we have emergency contacts, the mobile blue lights, which this right here acts as the same as the cold blue lights that are out in the parking lot in the building. Um, you can report a tip, something that if you don't wanna call us and tell us directly, you just hit this little button right here and you can report information to us. Uh, it is monitored by our dispatchers 24-7. Um, we also have here a safety toolbox. Let someone else in there. Um, emergency guidelines, which tells you how to deal with uh, various incidents. Of course, if you haven't already done so, it's uh, you hit this button right here, you can sign up for our OWL alert. That keeps you in the know of what's going on on campus. So for example, if you have to uh, lock down or shelter in place, you want to be able to know what's happening. You want to be able to get the alert. Uh, when we need to get some information to you, we're going to send an OWL alert. That means if you're working on a computer, any PGC computer, your screen will be locked and you will have to acknowledge the message that's coming across. Um, you also can do a virtual friend walk, which means you can send your location. You can let your friend know, hey, I'm walking from the CPA and I'm walking over to lot A by culinary. And if you stop for a period of time and they don't reach you, they can report that to, um, to us and let us know. And we'll be able to come and check on you to see why you haven't made it back to your uh, vehicle. So again, please download that if you haven't. Now, we're gonna talk about general safety tips. Reporting information to DPS, what do you say, depending on the uh, incident? Let's say that you feel as though someone is harassing you or stalking you or um, damaged your vehicle by hitting your uh, vehicle in the parking lot and they drove away, you contact us and you let us know your location. You try to, you have to be very detailed and give us a good description of the individual um, and officers will respond. One of the things that you see up here is see something, say something. And what does that mean? We need you in order to take action on the campus. We need you in order to take action. And when I say by that, we can't see everything. So when you report uh, information to us, we are able to act on that and move forward and follow up, investigate, and take necessary actions as needed. Uh, lockdown or shelter in place. So we do offer a lot of training um, here within the campus. We give information. Um, as really important if you guys could sign up for that. But lockdown and shelter in place is one of the things. So let's say uh, an active threat or an active shooter is here on campus. That's a lockdown. That's a shelter in place. What's the difference? You want to lock yourself. I'm sorry, hold on one second. All right, uh, shelter in place. You're gonna get that information on your um, owl alert. It'll tell you whether it's a lockdown or shelter in place. Sorry, sorry, I'm letting you in now. Sorry, do anyone have any questions for me? I can't see. Ruth, do anyone have any questions? Um, no, I don't have any questions, but I was just like wondering about the communication services. Like you said, um, there are like different emergency hotlines and like there's a safety box, but what does that safety box entail? So the, that's the cold blue box of what I'm talking about. And I'm actually going to go back. Okay. So when we look right here, this would be a part of the mobile blue light if you were to download the safety app. The safety app It's the same as the code blue box. So that information, if you are in an emergency and you need immediate response, you hit the button, they're located in the parking lot, or you can hit this right here. 
or you can hit the one that's located in a building uh, and it's majority of those buttons are in classrooms. You can hit it and it will send an officer to your location. It will connect you with our dispatcher. So let's say if you're walking from a building and sometimes at night, uh, certain parking lots are dark, right? And you feel uncomfortable. You can hit the code blue box and someone will come to your location. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. And again, if you download the Owl Safe app, that will connect you to us. And it has a lot of information. Did I answer That's your fine. question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. I don't know if you want to take this opportunity to do any Q and A's of what I went over so far, or I can keep going. No. Okay. okay, we can. Okay, no worries. We just flow together. Okay. <laughs> Um, so here, if you get the opportunity, I'm going to go back to the lockdown and shelter in place. Uh, please sign up for the active threats uh, training because it's really important so that you can learn what to do in a situation where you have to run, hide, fight regarding an active threat. Um, and have anybody, and I'm just going to ask anyone in the audience, have any of you attended any of our active threats training? No, I haven't. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Well, be sure to to sign up for that. You can go to the PGCC website and um, sign up for Department of Public Safety. We'll come out and put some training on. I am going to give me a second. I'm going to switch over and play a video for you guys. Give me a second. Please let me know if you can see my screen. See if it'll play now. Yes, we can see. Okay. Give me a second. I'm trying to see if I can get the volume. Let's see if I can get the volume. Give me one second. Will not play the value. That's sure. I'm in the middle of the presentation. See when you hit it. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. I'm not going to be able to use it.
All right, guys, I was trying to play a video, but for whatever reason, I'm having uh, difficulties with the sound, so I apologize. Uh, when you hit share screen, make sure you hit share audio as well. Yeah, we did. It it wouldn't it wouldn't um play. Hmm. Um, the last time you shared your screen when you asked if we could hear us, we could hear the sound of the video. You could. Yes. Okay. Let me go back. Okay. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. Okay, can you hear it? Yes. Because I don't hear it on my end. Greetings, I'm Grayling Williams, the Chief of the Prince George's Community College, Department of Public Safety. Here at Prince George's Community College, safety is a community responsibility. In this video, you will receive information, tips, and guidelines about how to better protect yourself and others while on campus during an active assailant situation, such as an active shooter or another type of incident involving an armed violent intruder. This short video will elaborate on Run, Hide, Fight, our emergency plan for such types of incidents and provide information to help you take some proactive measures if you are ever confronted with such an incident. This video will also discuss how the campus police and members of the Prince George's Police Department will respond to our campus, help to neutralize the threat and restore a sense of safety back to our campus. The goal of the Prince George's Community College Department of Public Safety is to serve you and maintain safety across all of our campuses. With our department running at full capacity all days throughout the year, we are still at risk for unexpected incidents. If you notice or identify anyone that presents an immediate danger, it is important that you report it immediately. Unfortunately, there are times when a situation is unavoidable and you must be prepared to act. If you are caught in an active shooter situation, don't hesitate. It is time to take action. Your first option should be to run. Leave the location of the incident and flee to a safe area. Evacuate the building immediately and alert others that are in your direction to leave. Leave your belongings and move away as far as possible from the threat location. Do not use elevators when evacuating. When at a safe distance, call PGCC Police on any campus phone at extension 0111 or call 911. Hey, yes, there's a man in Lanham Hall on the third floor with a gun. He's wearing a black shirt and blue jeans. Please send some help. Base to all units. Base to all units. Please start towards Lanham Hall. I repeat, please start towards Lanham Hall. I receive calls regarding a white male wearing a black t-shirt, blue jeans. He is armed with a black handgun. If you are not able to escape the immediate threat, the next option should be to hide. Do not jeopardize your safety trying to escape. Locate a room with a door lock, turn off the lights, remain quiet, and disable the vibration option on your phone. If needed, barricade the entry door to deny access into the room. Do whatever it takes to keep the assailant out. 
if outdoors take shelter in the nearest building or drive away from campus. Remember, law enforcement's first priority is to stop the assailant. To receive updates on the active situation, call the college's hotline at 301-546-3333 or look out for emergency text messages. If you cannot run or hide, your only option left is to fight. Employ self-defense measures to protect yourself against a potential assailant. Move swiftly to grab an object that can be used against the assailant. Encourage those around you to participate to increase the chances of a successful submission. Try to rush the shooter as a group and target the hand that is holding the firearm. As first responders arrive at the location, their mission is not to assist the injured. It is to neutralize the threat. It is important you keep your hands up and do not make any sudden movements toward the officers. After the threat has been neutralized, first responders will instruct the survivors into proper evacuations. I have a weapon. 29 base, we have the suspect in custody. For those personnel hiding at the threat location, do not move until the on-site personnel have located you. Follow all instructions as you are evacuating the building. After the location is deemed secure, emergency medical personnel will enter the building and tend to the injured immediately. With the collaboration of the Prince George's County Police, PGCC Police, and EMS, we are dedicated to resolving all active threats and returning our campus back to its normal, safe, and secure environment. Experiencing and surviving an active shooter incident can be traumatizing, and here at Prince George's Community College, we provide all survivors with access to counseling and mental health services. After such an incident, please contact PGCC Mental Health Services at 301-546-0092 or visit the Wellness Center for further assistance. Hello. So any thoughts about the video? Um, I feel like the video was, oh, sorry. Go so, ahead. Oh, uh, go I ahead, feel, Cindy. Oh, go ahead, Ruth. Oh, no, Cindy can go, sorry. Oh, um, I just had a question. Um, have you guys ever thought of putting, um, I'm not sure what they're called, but you know, at the airport, when you walk through the little- Metal door. detectors? Yes. Um, did you guys ever thought of doing that to reduce any of um, guns or knives that people may be bringing to the school? Because the school is like wide open. And I've always thought about that. Like, you know, what if I'm sitting next to someone? I mean, this just, yeah, who might have a little issue and just pop out a knife and I don't know, you know? So let me ask you, as a student, you would be okay? With, I'm not saying that it that we could do it. I would have to ask, of course. But as a student, would you be okay with coming in and seeing metal detectors at at every entrance? Um, at every entrance. Uh... Now I can say they are working on a Owl Safe app. Um, and eventually all students, staff, and faculty will have a card where you, where you will have to swipe in for entry. I've thought about that too. That's why like with the metal detector thing, uh -huh. it's like a yes and no for me because I know how there are some students who, um, well, I'm one, I carry um, pepper spray just because I use different transportations to school and home and I keep it okay. just for me. But I mean, there are some people who might not use it for that, you know? And okay. so, I mean, I think the ID thing is really, really smart because I carry it, but I don't have nothing to like scan it. And I think, I think that's smart. I think that will help too. see if you're a student or not. Uh-huh. So, I mean, it goes for both. I don't know. I've always thought about it. But that's, but that's good that you're thinking about that. 
you're you're thinking about your safety you're thinking about things that could be improved and i can tell you that that's a good conversation to have and i will definitely ask okay 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 it's nothing wrong and don't be embarrassed of, of feeling that way because every, all of us have a part to play when we think about safety okay uh someone else raised their hand yeah, it's a, this is Dr. Snowden. Yes. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, the video brought back some not too pleasant memories. Um, for those of you who don't know, I, I moved here from Florida and I was probably about less than maybe five miles from the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas shooting. And I was actually probably about an hour away from the shooting in Uvalde, Texas. So. You know, when I when I saw, you know, what was kind of being played out, it, it brought back those those memories, which were you know pretty, pretty horrible uh, for me and my family. So but, you know, um, this this is the time that uh, we're living in, unfortunately, and we have to be prepared. So that's all I have to say. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the videos definitely was intended to uh, bring awareness. And we actually, the video is in the, uh, some of the actors are our students who participated in putting the video together. Um, any more questions? Um, hi, on Hello. the third floor, I think there were like speakers on the walls. Are those also to contact the campus police in case of an emergency? Like where you could press the button and talk? Yes. Okay. Uh, which third floor? Lanham Hall, sorry. Lanham, Lanham, Lanham. I know you have a code blue box and it's got a red button, right? I believe so. Yes, you can hit that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? All right, can you see my screen? So the next thing I'm going to talk about is cybersecurity and prevention. Have you ever received an email or a text message about a job that you probably didn't apply to or someone asking you regarding money or saying, if you do this, you, you've won this or you've got a gift card or something like that? Has anybody ever received that type of um, email or text message? Yes, yes. Uh, a lot of the times, yes. yeah, actually. All right, so criminals are seeking to get your information. And this is how they scam you to get you to send your information and then they ask for money. So when you receive those type of uh, emails or text messages, don't trust that. Uh, have you got it by like email? Let's say like maybe your school email. Has anyone ever received any type of uh, email like this or a link, like a weird link with your school email? And even staff, because I know we have staff on here with your PGCC email. If you do, you can report it to us and we send it up to um, our um, enterprise technology department and they look into it. But the one thing I want to tell you is do not click the link. Do not um, type in your information because that is how they steal your identity. Um, if you notice too, like on social media, um, a lot of them will send you links like this DM. So they're trying to download uh, information and software onto your uh, devices. So please, if you ever get something like that, don't click on it. Well, again, the social media one, um... I've gotten a lot of those, like they would claim a whole, you know, this is going to protect your phone. Sometimes it's through DM, sometimes it's on my timeline. They would just post it on my page and be like, oh, you know, some some famous person got into an accident and then yeah. this and then that. It's just a lot of stuff that doesn't even make sense. And that's how they hack your account. When you click the link. So don't click links that you're not familiar with. Um, you know, be cautious of your information that you you um, put online. So I'm not sure if you, if if Android does it, but I know uh, iPhone. Like sometimes it'll 
every little link that like, let's say if you go to a website, it'll want to auto fill in your information, uh, disable that. Uh, do not use the same password for all of your um, social media or your credit card, bank information, um, any type of um, stuff that you do on your phone. Try to uh, switch up your, your, your passwords. And definitely, if someone calls you um, regarding information and asking you for your social security number, don't give that information out. I don't know about you guys, but... I've received several phone calls from someone saying that they were, were with the social security department or IRS, and I would be arrested if I didn't send them an amount of money. I just told them, hey, send them to me. And then they'll say, what's your address? And I'm like, well, you already have it if I'm going to be arrested. So I'm not sure if you guys ever dealt with that, but don't, don't give anyone your, um, your, your address or your bank account information. If someone's calling you over the phone for that or sending you stuff, especially if you know you didn't apply for a certain job. Don't send your information. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. Especially when they're saying, um, if you send me, if I send you a check and you send me back uh, $5,000 or um, if you do this, then you have the job. Well, first off, you shouldn't have to pay to to get a job. That is a scam. And just, you know, don't even respond to, to people like that. Or when they say, can you send me $100 in gift cards? Because that is a new thing that they're doing now. Or I have your, your loved ones been arrested and you've got to give us gift cards. And then the gift cards turn into they want you to send them the access code and stuff like that. Don't do that. And definitely in text messages, don't respond to text messages that you are not familiar with, especially if it's a weird link, don't click on it. And then helping someone in, um, have you ever seen someone that was upset or kind of kept to themselves and they look like they were in distress? There are things that you can do here. You can go to uh, my PGCC website and you can do an incident report. In the incident report, you can say some of the things that you see um, if you're concerned about someone that's here on campus and pretty much they might not be able to control their emotions or they, their behavior and they said some words that might have triggered, triggered you that caused you concern. Um, don't sit there and keep it to yourself and say, okay, well, they said this, but I'm not sure. Um, because those are signs that could lead up to other issues and other incidents and stuff like that. Like you want to make someone aware of situations that are happening. Especially if you hear someone say that they want to harm themselves or harm others. That's one of the things when we talk about active threats. Um, it's always an indicator of one person knew that a situation was going to happen because the person might have said something, but, you know, the person who might have witnessed something or heard something, they didn't want to report it. And this would be the perfect opportunity if you download the Owl Safe app, then you can put that information in and it will come to, to DPS and we could take it and we will work with Code of Conduct or the uh, Behavior Intervention Team to um, make sure that the person received help. Now here, if you have a situation and it's not an emergency, and let's say um, you know you you want to talk to someone, but you don't want to talk to a police officer, we do have counseling services here on campus over at the Weltness Center in um, Bladen Hall, room one thirty three. Dr. Bryant. You can reach out to her and, you know, she is a good resource. We also have a disability support services over in Lanham Hall. Um, they are good uh, support services. And then our Title IX coordinator who works very well with uh, Code of Conduct and Campus Police. I mean, anything such as, you know, if you're feeling depressed, uh, sexual assault, domestic violence, uh, rape, abuse, um, anything like that these resources are here for you.
Now, I wanna talk about a, disrupt, a disruptive person, what to do. You call us, you contact DPS and you let us know where you're at. If you got a disorderly person that's acting up, or I'll say this, uh, one of the things that we are facing right now is we're having a lot of Largo High School students come over on campus. They come here, they smoke, right? They smoke in the stairs. Uh, they're looking for a crime of opportunity. Some of them are just skipping school and they're looking for a place to hang out. And then we have others that are looking for a crime opportunity, right? It may commit a theft. Uh, it's really important, like, so like your property, if you leave your purse or your book bag down, and I see a lot of our students who might be over at the CPA and you put your book bag down by the stairs or with your friends and you assume that your friends are watching your book bag or your purse. And then you go over to Duke Student Center to pick up some food. Stuff like that creates a crime of opportunity where the individual, whoever is here, um, because this is an open campus, could steal your belongings. So you, you, know, you wanna report to us a suspicious person. Have you guys ever um, seen someone like, and it doesn't have to be here on campus or been in a, a scenario where you saw like a suspicious package or book bag or something that just was like out of the norm and you kind of wondered to yourself, like, why is that sitting there? Anybody? Okay. Well, if you come here and you see a suspicious package or a box or some type of bag, you can contact us. Please don't attempt to open it. Uh, call us. You can call us on the 0666. You can go and tell a staff or a faculty member and they can hit the emergency button on their phone. We'll respond and we'll work with Prince George's County Police Department to figure out what is actually in the box um, and their bomb squad would come out. Now, let me ask you, do you guys know what to do in a medical emergency? Anybody? Uh, I know how to perform CPR. Yeah. Okay, that's that good. Call 911. Yes, <laughs> that's good. Um, please, if you see someone that's having a, a medical emergency, don't just sit there and watch them. Pick up the phone and dial 911 um, because you never know what type of uh, issue they may they might be having and every second helps. That is what we are here for. And when you call 911, remember like, so we've got abbreviations for buildings, right? So if you say that you are at DSC and you're out with someone who's unconscious, you can't say DSC because uh, 911 will not know what that means. You would actually have to say Duke Student Center and you're on the campus of Prince George's Community College. And you would have to be very detailed and then they would uh, transfer that call to us. Also, they would start, you know, the medical units to respond. Anybody else? So here's my contact information. Um, if you need anything, please reach out to me. Um, I'm available. I do, you know, I am right now currently conducting a lot of active threats training um, for the campus. And we are promoting, you know, the OwlSafe app because we want to be able to connect to everyone and we want you to be able to have a safe space to um, share information with us. Yes. I see your hand. Hi, thank you so much, uh, Lieutenant Smith, for this phenomenal presentation. Um, I have some naive questions like, when we are in situations like as women, what are some special um, precautions we can take or how we should be prepared? Are there special tips or? Yeah, so like um, for us, when we are, when you are, let's say you're here late and you are working late, right? One thing to do, and I tell the officers, you don't need to leave the building open. So it's okay to, to call and say, hey, um, I'm working by myself in Lanham Hall. 
it's dark outside, no one else is here. Can I have the building secured? Right? And then you call and you let the officers know that you are leaving. Now, let's say you, you decide to leave and you don't want to wait for someone to come give you an escort and stuff like that. Okay, so for starters, um, and I'm the same way when I leave, I have my purse, I have like 20 bags with me, right? That's what we do. We have our laptop, we have our purse, we have um, bags for other stuff. Try to, you know, put other bags inside your bags so that you're not like showing that you have your computer or you have a lot of valuables with you. Um, you wanna make it where, okay, that you're not a target, right? The one thing too is um, a lot of us, we carry uh, handbags where you might carry it in your hand. Uh, try not to do that. Try to get a purse where you can carry it close to your body, right? It's not easy for someone to snatch. But if someone comes with a weapon and says, give me your stuff, of course, give it to them. Um, what I do, uh, and I see a lot of folks, and I'm going to let someone else into the waiting room. Um, I put my purse in another bag. I don't walk with my purse out unless I'm like somewhere else and I'm out with friends, but I don't keep that type of stuff out or I keep my uh, phone in my pocket in case I need it in an emergency. I don't have my phone like in my, in my purse or in my other bags. I keep it, you know, somewhere close where I can grab it and it's not um, connected to something else. The other thing is when you're walking out, you know, a lot of people are like this in their cell phones and you got your head down and you're not paying attention to your surroundings. That makes us a target. Have your keys out when you, you're going to your vehicle, like go ahead and, and pop your door, prop, you know, open your door um, when you see it, hit the unlock button so that your stuff is ready. Uh, so what I do when I'm out, I go ahead when I'm getting close to my car, I may pop my uh, trunk and throw my bags in there. And then I've got my door already unlocked. And then I go ahead and get in. I get I'm coming to work at like 530 in the morning. Right. So it's really dark outside. Um, so you, you want to be aware of your surroundings. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Cindy. I, I just wanted to say, um, I, I came from a very militant father and he has all girls and I'm the oldest of the girls. And from what he has taught us was always, we use the buddy system, like, yeah. Extremely. And he's always said, you know, if you are on your own and you feel unsafe, we send our location automatically. So yeah. wherever you're going, he, he kind of knows, and I'm, I'm 25. So is he still like, you know, send it to me with me and all my sisters. He's very like on the hour. Okay, I know what time you come home. We'd let them know, hey, we're home or hey, we got to school. At least you have somebody. So you have a, you know, a trail. Yeah. Um, and, and that goes back to the Owl Safe app. Remember what I said? You could do the virtual buddy app, the buddy walk. Right. I, I, I didn't know about that at all. So that's like a, that's, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I walk, you know, I always look around. I don't speak to people unless I have to. I do keep aware of my surroundings and, you know, so. Yeah, so download the Owl Safe app and you can um, share your, your movements with your father, your friend, uh, family members. So when they see that you have stopped for a period of time, then they can contact the uh, police for you. That's all in the owl, the owl app. So let me ask you guys this: Would you guys be interested in learning some like um, taking like a rad course, like a defense type course? Um, yes. If I set it up. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Okay, so I'm yeah. gonna work. I'm gonna work on that and bring it um, to the campus. And when you guys see it, please sign up. I will work with some instructors. And what they do is they teach you some defense techniques and things to better protect yourself and be prepared. Uh, I'll save app. I'm sorry. I did have a question. Um, if this um, program was to happen, is it just for students or it could be for anybody? It, it would be open to the college community. Okay. Yes. 
So I will work on that um, when we come back from spring break. And if you guys have any suggestions that you of things that you would like to see that I could put on for you guys, let me know. Any other questions, Ruth? Um, no, I don't have any more questions. Anyone else? So earlier, uh, I have one question uh, in commencement. Okay, I will wait. We have a question maybe from this from a student. Please. How will we get the information for the class? So I will promote the um the class with uh student learning and engagement. Um, when we when I can get it uh, set up, I have to make a few phone calls and reach out to um, a few police departments to see who is actually a certified instructor. I see one hand up. Yes. Hello. How are you? Fine. How are you? I'm good. So one question that I have is like I. Um sometimes walk early in the morning. And then just like you said, you have to check your surrounding, but sometimes there might be time whereby, you know, some somebody might be in their car with the pink, you know, the dark thing. So you would know if somebody's inside that car. So with that being said, how will you know if somebody's in their car watching you while you are about to get in your car and stuff like that? So what are you talking about for on campus or just anywhere? No, anywhere anywhere. So one of the things is you want to try to park in a in a lit area so that you can see uh, what's happening. Unfortunately, you you won't be able to see if someone else is in their car if their tenant if their windows are tenant. You will have to like um, really like so if someone's parked next to you and you feel uncomfortable, what I would recommend is you can call someone and be on the phone with them and say, hey, Stay on the phone with me. I'm about to get in my car. I feel uncomfortable. Um, but most police departments, if you call them and you give them your location, they will come to you and give you an escort. All right. Thank so, you. So, so for us, if let's say you're here on campus and you are parked over by lot H and you are at Lanham Hall, right? you could call us and we will give you an escort to your vehicle. And we, we would also check out that vehicle. Now, the other option you could do is you could call in the, the vehicle as a suspicious uh, person and you can, and officers would respond to check out that, that individual. Now, okay. we, all, we all know when we come out and something doesn't feel right, you get like a feeling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you you get you get a feeling <laughs> of when something's not right. Trust your feeling when you get it. Don't turn it off and say, "Okay, it's nothing." No, it could be something. And when you get those gut feelings, that's that's saving you right there because you pretty much know. Make the phone call. I always say, make the phone call and let the police officers figure it out because that's what we're here for. That's what those out there that work street patrol, that's what they are here for. Any other questions? Um, I have a question. So something like that, like happened to one of my other friends where she was like followed by another car while she was like looking for her car. So I was wondering if, what we could do to advocate for more for the app because I don't think she knew about the app and I feel like she could have felt more safe if she knew that she had access to that. So what we need is we need for the word of mouth. We need our students who got the app to help promote it to their friends. We, you know, because we're promoting it too. Um, and maybe we need to do like a kickoff and maybe, I don't know, some type of event and to, to get folks to promote. Maybe if you sign up, we give you something. Uh, do you have any recommendations? 
because I don't think a lot of people sign up for it. I did a training yesterday and not so many people signed up for the app. Um, I know I promote it, but we we got to get the word out because the app is really uh, beneficial where you can connect with us, um, but also use it when you're you're off campus. It gives you it gives you contact information to like other police departments. You're on mute. You're on mute. Oh, oh, sorry. I was saying, OK, but I also think we could advocate for it by um, hosting an event and we can call it call it like a safety event and have refreshments or okay. to uh, um, encourage people to come and want to stay and hear okay. more. So would you like to work with me on that? Yes, I can. OK, so I'm going to drop my email in the uh, chat. And then you and I can get together after um, spring break. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, I put it in the chat. Yes, Cindy. I I wanted to know, is there any course or anything that's about all this safety that things that you've been talking about? Because I was very in, like intrigued and I did not know the app till today. And I've been there for a very long time at PG. And it's like really surprising to me. I'm like, why isn't there like a course or is there like a little extra credit thing or I don't know about this. Um, so we do we do do safety trainings. Um, and I'm be honest, sometimes we don't get a, a good turnout well, when we're sharing this information. Um, yeah. so yeah, so what I will do when we come back, I will set up some training. Um, and normally the training is held in Duke Student Center. Um, is this training, okay. Um, so let me let me ask you, would you like to work with me and we can set some stuff up and we can promote and you can work with me and Ruth? Um, I, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. I've been, so I actually, I've done Taekwondo. Okay. And um, that's why I'm not, I'm not sure because okay. that's how I'm like curious. What is the training on? Like, is it from the police? So it's or? from, so it's from the police department and we go over the app, but we also talk about other, um, incidents and things like that to help you prepare for, um, anything that may happen on campus. Okay. But on the app, if you look, it, it, when you download it, there's things like it's a uh, tip box. You can hit the the little button and you can send tip information to us. Uh, I see. Okay. Right. So yeah. let's say let's say you are in. I'll use this one. Let's say you are in Chesapeake Hall and we've got student, uh, not students. You got three individuals that went into the stairs. Uh, at the entrance and they went all the way up to the top and you smell CDS smoke. You would go to the app and you can put that information in and send it. Our dispatchers would get it and they would alert the officers and they would send someone. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think this app should be advocated way more because it's just, there's so many things seen and then it's like unknown, so. Yeah, um, then you can, you can also report, you know, uh, Let's say, I think it's lot B, it's got some dark spots. So you could put in there, uh, lot B is very dark, uh, lighting should be checked. Okay. You know, you, you could send okay. us information and we will look into it. Our dispatchers um, monitor this. And I'm gonna tell you, we have received a lot of information through, through the app. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Nakai? Hi, um, when you and Ruth were talking about different ways to promote the app, is it possible to add it to the syllabus for classes? Because I know with most syllabus, syllabuses, I know pretty much for each class, like the, the grading might be different, but when it comes to like classroom guidelines, college policies, um, the code of contact, it's like the same for each syllabus. So could it be possible to put information about the app and about campus safety within the syllabuses for classes? I will I think, ask. Um, I think what you said makes sense because like sometimes if you make it like an event based on, you know, people's schedule being so busy, sometimes 
they won't understand how important it is. So okay. they might not show up. So I think with the syllabus, because all teachers, you know, will read it out from every semester. So I think that that's going to work well. Yeah. I will ask the question and and see if, if we can do that. That's a that's a good idea. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. What's the difference between the two keyboards? Uh, so this one's gonna have like a trackpad on it. Uh, oh. Like Any other questions? Like stay. Mm -hmm. um, I think the um the survey is there a link to the survey so we can um do it to get the extra party for attending. Yes, I was just gonna talk about that. So um I'll drop the link in the chat now, and um. So this link is for the survey and I wanted to encourage everyone to please um um sorry so please fill out the form because it will it will allow us to take your suggestions and it can help us make a better STEM week for next year and it can also help you get extra credit so you should put your course name and your professor's name in um in the survey and we can give you extra credit and also, please let me add that for every session, we have a raffle. So if you put in the survey, you are automatically entered into the raffle. And so we will distribute the gifts after the spring break. So I did have one question. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, so I used to, um, I used to take, um, night courses on campus <clears throat> a couple years ago before the pandemic. One of the issues that I, that I think, I, I don't know if it's already been addressed because I haven't been on campus in a couple of years, was when I would come out of class at night, <clears throat> I would notice that the parking lots were dark. Um, there, were, there were always uh, an, a police car, an officer's car sitting, you know, by the doors when you come out, but I didn't think that there were enough police officers patrolling the parking lot during the times when people were getting out of class. And, and really more so when you had stragglers that would leave class early or, or coming in late um, with the darkened parking lot. I think that if they had better lighting, it would serve more as a deterrent um, because it doesn't make it as easy for you know, that criminal mind to, to get active if they feel like somebody can see them. Yeah. Now, that's probably been addressed. Like I said, I haven't been on the campus um, in about two years now. Yeah, so we are working with facilities on the lights. One of the issue is, is whenever we are renovating a new building, sometimes there are issues with the construction and underground wiring and stuff like that that might impact um, other lights on campus. Um, facilities did put out some light towers. And one of the things that they are working on while we are all on spring break is working on making sure that we have uh, better lights and uh, changing them out to uh, LED, LED lights um, and stuff like that. So they are trying to make an effort to improve that because that has been an issue. Um, one of the things that I do want to say, so we do have officers, public service aides, sheriff deputies, and um, security officers patrolling. Unfortunately, we do have the officers, the police officers uh, patrolling the lots, but we can't pull everybody out from the buildings and have everybody right. in the in the parking lot because then we won't have anyone in the buildings and that creates a crime of opportunity. So we do have to keep people on foot patrol, patrolling the buildings and patrolling the lots and they're moving around. And one of the ways that you can identify <laughs> a police officer in the parking lots is because they have the red and blue lights flashing. That is so that you can see that we have folks in the uh, in the parking lot. No, I, I think you guys have done uh, uh, an admirable job of um, of of having a presence, um, but I, I think that there's could be just a little bit more that can be added to that. Yeah, like I said, as far as the lighting, like you can't expect the officers to be everywhere all the time, but having the apps and those blue boxes also help. Um, and as people get more aware of the app and, and, and the boxes, 
I mean, that that can only make it better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when we come back, we are working on a safety walk with the uh, student government leadership uh, to talk about the lighting and environmental issues and stuff like that here on campus. So I recommend look out for that. Um, and you would be a good person to join that safety walk and point out some of those issues and participate in that and being able to give your feedback because that's what we're looking for. Yeah, I would love to, but I work too far away from the campus to make it down there to be able to participate. Uh, if I could, if I could join, you know, via Zoom calls and stuff, I would love to uh, to to work with you guys. You know, I've okay. done this for many years as a, a Navy sailor, so you know that type of training is sort of my of my wheel well. Okay. Just look out for it, and I'm sure that there will probably be other opportunities where it could be by um, Zoom, where you could join in. Okay. And also take my uh, my emails in the chat. I'll drop drop it down there again. Uh, if you have any recommendations or uh, just anything, just let me know. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Ruth. I'm gonna give it back to you. Hi, um, thank you so much for your presentation. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I feel like your presentation was very insightful and gave me a lot of tips on what I should do when I'm presented with an issue, like um, a life-threatening issue. And um, I'm pretty sure everyone else here can uh, is a very appreciative of you taking your time out to um, give us this presentation. So thank you very much. And thank, thank you to everyone else that stayed. Thank you guys for inviting me. Thank you so much. And Ruth, thank you. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Smith. Thank you everyone for joining the session.